This lecture is about applying the divergence theorem as a mathematical thinking tool to analyze a certain physical phenomenon. You see here a number of famous fundamental laws of physics that can be explained and also derived using the divergence theorem. Our focus now is on a keyless principle. Achimides stated that the buoyancy that keeps the solid object afloat is equal in magnitude to the weight of the displaced fluid. So if we imagine an object either partially or fully immersed in water as the fluid, the term Buoyancy refers to the resultant vertical force that pushes the object upward. Here our goal is to analyze this buoyancy to prove that it is indeed equal to the weight of the displayed fluid. So we start with defining the Cartesian coordinate system which for this case just follows the standard direction as we did before. So we have air and water or fluid and we have the positive y-axis pointing into the screen. So the origin of this coordinate system is at the air fluid interface. Next, we are going to look closer at these two relevant field quantities, the force field and the pressure field. Mathematically speaking, one is a vector field, the other is a scalar field. This is where I want to emphasize again about deep thinking. Look at the definition of pressure. So F is given as P times A, but this is mathematically true only if we refer to the magnitude of F. If we consider F as vector, then this mathematical statement is problematic because we are equating a vector with scalar because P and A are scalars. So we will turn the area A as a vector quantity and we do this like we did before with the surface integration using the unit normal vector at the location of the surface. Now, in terms of field values, on the left-hand side, we have vector field for the force, and on the right-hand side, we have the scalar pressure field. We now want to sort of visualize how the pressure field looks like. Now, if you have a box object partially in water like this, we have the force vector field acting perpendicular to the surfaces of the solid like this. To further look at the field distribution of the force on the box, we look at the pressure field first. So pressure is given by negative rho gz, so we see that P at x, y, z just varies with z with the linear variation or distribution. Now since each vector f is given by small area dA along the height on the box, we can visualize the vector field distribution like this. You see how somewhat the vector size is increasing along the depth on the of the fluid where they are zero at the fluid surface. Now, for a different object like a sphere, we kind of approximated force or we have this kind of approximated force vector field on its surface. If you want to consider the resultant force, you can imagine that some of the normal component of all these vectors will end up with an upward force that we call buoyancy. Now, let's look at how we express the buoyancy in terms of the pressure field. As we saw before, each force vector is expressed with a pressure value of a small area dA. 
S, so it describes the vector field. Then the resultant force is the sum, i.e. the integral over the whole area of the solid. So the principle is we want to prescribe the force as acting on the solid. So by the convention of the normal vector of the surface, the force is opposite direction. So we need the negative sign here. Since P is negative rho gz, then we can express the resultant force as this way. The negative signs are simply cancelled out. So we're done with this expression. We will use this in the next step to relate it to the weight of the displaced liquid. Check out part 2 of this lecture.